at this time of year, which you can often see, so thank you. <laughs> all right, so um, for all of us here, again, just referencing Beacon Ed, a quick trivia point for you. How many people know this? So, do you know in the New York State uh, coat of arms, which is on the New York State flag, there is a mountain with the sun coming up over it, and that mountain is actually Mount Beacon. Look that up later. Prove me wrong. I tried to find it on the internet I, to make sure that the piece of trivia I heard was true. It's true, right? Yeah, it's amazing. All right, so um, I wanted to point out how good I look in this t-shirt. Right? So you may be wondering to yourself, wow, like you may be thinking, he looks amazing in that t-shirt. Or you actually may be thinking, he way overestimates how good he looks in that t-shirt. Either way, um, if you wish to feel the empowerment of wearing a shirt like this, you can, because they are for sale. And during our mission, the merchandise table will be open. And in addition to these shirts, there are CDs, cassettes, 45s. For those of you who know what a 45 is, how amazing is that experience? Um, yeah, so that's going to be available to you during intermission. So we are going to move into the storytelling portion of the evening, which is very near and dear to my heart. And when I think about the holidays and stories, I think about a young woman um, back in 1945, a young mother in South Oak Cliff, Texas just outside of Dallas. It's a World War II um, built up neighborhood for everybody coming home. Um, and she wants an activity set. So she goes to her local five and dime and she spends whatever little bits of money she has to buy this little nativity set, which is, um, you know, lovely, but you know, not anything terribly special, but special to her. So she brings it home and she sets it up and her daughter um, over the years starts to use that as a tradition and they set up this nativity set and then her daughter has two sons and they every year start to look forward to when Mama brings out the cardboard box full of the nativity pieces and the manger and we all um, set it up year after year after year and I think about how there's no way that Mama could have known back in 1945 when she was making that decision to do what she could to get a nativity set, that she would be, you know, that someday I would be standing here telling you the story about how special that is to this very day. My mother, every year, brings out that nativity set and we still see that as such an important tradition in our lives. And so I just share that with you to give us all a moment to think about these traditions and these moments of holidays and being together and how we never know what small action we're going to take is going to ripple through the rest of our lives and our family's lives to become something really special and be a wonderful holiday tradition. And so with that, I want to bring to the stage this amazing man who I've really grown to admire and appreciate here in Beacon. He is a very seasoned actor and musician. He has studied with T. Schreiber Studios, with Stella Adler, with the Actors Institute in the city. He plays with the Black Coffee Blues Band here in Beacon. And he most recently just did a reading of Edgar Allan Poe stories for Halloween at the Howland Cultural Center. And he is going to do a really lovely reading of What's the Night Before Christmas for You, Mr. Dimitri Archip. <laughs> Was the night 
before Christmas. But all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap when out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to the objects below. What to my wondering eyes should appear? Miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver, so lively and quick. And in a moment, it's a snick. <laughs> More rapid than eagles, his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dancer, now Dasher, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Dollar and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. <laughs> As leaves that before the wild hurricane fly when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky, so to the housetop the courses they flew, with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas. Then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. The bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack, his eyes, how they twinkle, his dimples, how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry, his droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and smoke, it encircled his head like a reef. He had a broad face, a little round belly that shook when he laughed, like a bowl full of jelly. Yeah. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. The twink of his eye and the twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to regret. He spoke without a word, and straight to his work. He filled all the stockings, turned with a jerk, laying his finger aside his nose, giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, and his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight. Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right, how's your party going? Thank you so far. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. We're going to take a very short break. Again, the table's going to be open for you to get some good stocking stuffers um, if you have any last-minute Christmas gifts you need. And we'll be back in 15 minutes with the Costellos! <laughs>